What's going on everybody, Jason Hadzik here and today we're going to be pretty much reviewing our three years of ownership with this BMW we got behind us, we got our little 435i behind us and we're going to be covering pretty much the good, the bad, the ugly of what went down, how it went down, how many miles we got out of it, what, we, what we've done in pretty much the years that we've had it and where it's at now so let's get right to it, let's get to the point, we'll make this a quick one so you know overall it's been very reliable, um, I got the car with 52,000 miles on it the car's at 101,000 miles, and just now, you know, I mean, we had motor failure now, but to be realistic here, I beat at least redlining and doing all that in the car at least 30,000 miles worth. And I did, I did about 50,000 miles of driving between now and then. And if you're doing like, I don't know, how many miles can, do you do a year? On average, say if you do like 10K miles a year, I did five years worth of driving in three years. All I had to do was axles from sliding. The only, there's only very few things that actually went wrong outside of just doing, you know, basic things like oil, you know, valve, like valve cover gasket, oil pan, val uh, valve cover gasket, oil filter housing gasket, things like that. And like water pump, that's like a very basic thing. All the N5 kind of chassis and a lot of older BMWs and almost all the cars, every car pretty much, you're gonna have to do a water pump eventually. You're gonna have to do an engine thermostat eventually and things like that. Obviously, you're gonna have to do oil change and spark plugs on all your cars too, because that's just how it goes. The only real interesting thing that went down, I guess, so to speak, in terms of unorthodox things that broke, um, we had a we had to do a Valvetronic motor, which was a bit of a scary job to do. You're just getting into it because you got to crack open the valve cover, take some things out, and work down from there. But once you get it done, it's very very simple. I mean, the, every I got the car back together real quick right after that. It's just more of just a scary thing because you're going in the motor and you're doing stuff. But it's a very simple, easy job to do. Unfortunately, these cars come with a plastic charge pipe, so those are known to break from time to time, pretty much all the time. So I guess that broke. We went through axles, but we, you know, we were racing and sliding and drifting all around. So for you to not expect to break an axle or two doing that, then beats me. We had a uh, front caster rod bushing failure. Um, that, you know, their rubber bushings, I'm beating on them. You know, you can't blame the car for that. You can't blame the car for engine mounts going back because you're sending the car too. The engine mounts are just going out now at 101,000 miles. Like, come on now, man, this is a 2016. It's not, you know, I mean, by now it's a little different because it's 2022, but you know, I got this car in 2019, three years old and it had 50,000 miles on it. It was a one woman owner from Ohio who had this car. And we, since 60 something thousand miles, we've been full bolt-ons. No, yeah, 67 I believe is when our our charge pipe broken that's when we went full bolt on so we've been stage two fbo stock motor stock fuel pump we had a fuel pump go bad but that's what happens when you tune cars you got to upgrade certain things but we were stock fueling and everything over 40,000 miles pretty much 40,000 miles on a stage two tuned map like tuned car i mean you can't get mad at that this this the, i put the beats on this car and nothing happened it came with an lsd from factory you know the only issues is your axles or axles and and it's very simple stuff a lot of the stuff that do does go bad is stuff that you have to replace on just about any car you know the valve tr maybe not the valvetronic motor but like that to each is their own i mean rod bearings are like an issue on this car as well i haven't had i haven't had metal shavings even with the engine failure that i had i have a magnetic drain plug and there's still no oil shavings going on that if i wasn't drifting and sliding the car i can definitely get at least 150,000 miles probably before i'd have to do a head gasket or any of these major things that do go wrong um but come on man yeah i, I it may look bad just because of the way I'm showing it to you guys, maybe, but it, that's not the case. That's not the case. We we did a lot of stuff with this car. We took it state to state. We took it out of state so many times. We went on so many road trips. We I remember one time, I, I believe it was our, one of the times we went to, we drove out to Massachusetts. My axle has been clicking for at least like, two, three weeks prior and I was still sliding on it. And then I went to Massachusetts, drove all the way out there, was sliding out there, still good. I have a crazy video where I was gonna do a 360 after doing some, going so close to the pole the entire time, I'll put it right here. 
I was gonna do 360, but I didn't feel comfortable with the space, and I still didn't break the thing. And we were going crazy in the city all the way around. We were we were doing we were nuts, and nothing that never happened. We didn't break the axle there. We broke it later doing a burnout on the way to the body shop because I was literally waiting to break it, like I was driving with intent to break it at that point, because I knew it was gonna happen. I was gonna replace the pair. So what the what am I gonna do? Not do a burnout? Come on. So they're really reliable. I drive the car to its extreme. I don't drive it like, I mean, I do drive it like a grandma now. You know, after like the 70 something thousand mile mark, that's when I really started, you know, I wasn't like being a dickhead, cutting everybody off and this and that, but you know, if I had a, if, if, if there's an open windy highway on this magical route to Mexico, in Mexico, that just happens to appear in front of me, there's no way I'm not gonna go crazy on it. Come, like, I learned how to race before I learned how to slide. And, and those are two different ways to approach two different things. So, you know, it's, I'd recommend it. It's not, I'm showing you the extremes of it. And also I would have it back on the road if I just wanted to keep it the way it is, stage two full bolt-ons. I, I could have been had a motor in this thing. It's not hard to find an M55 motor. It's hard to find the M2 M55 motor. If you haven't seen this video, watch it here. I pretty much break down everything N55, so that's an interesting video. But to find that motor, it's a little harder. That's the only reason why it's not running yet. I'm not pressed on it. If I was pressed for time, I'd go and buy it from the crate and then just get it in and then just go do it. But I'm trying to see if I can do it this way because I, I, you know, I can still get places. I just can't get places in this thing, unfortunately. But if you're thinking, you know, this is like the scariest thing of all time, listen, it's not. As long as you're economical and you're not scared to learn things on your own. Because it, it's a little, it is a little intimidating to work on these cars with the electrical stuff that it has. But it's also important to remember that it's easier than a BMW V8. And that's probably not what you were expecting to t for me to say. But yes, the BMW V8s are some of the most obnoxious things to work on. Also... The S55 is also more annoying to work on. So to get like an N5 chassis car, or like a B58, B58, you have to do less and you get more. It's a no brainer. So I'd recommend it, word of advice. I'm not your, I'm not your CPA. I'm not your accountant. I'm not a master mechanic. I'm just me, Jason Hodzik. This is my ZHP one of a hundred mile behind me that we're working and doing some crazy stuff with. So hopefully you learned some stuff in this video here. Hit like, comment, subscribe if you did, and if you'd like to learn more. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to respond to all of them. So everybody, until the next time, be safe, be suave. Until next time, be safe.